Yo, what up? My name is Vladimir Richet from ChaseAndRider.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the top 10 shoes between $300 and $500. So without further ado, let's start with the countdown. Number 10, Carlos Santos. Carlos Santos is a brand out of Portugal. Carlos Santos, like every brand on this countdown, is Goodyear Welted. Their shoes retail for around $300, so they're the least expensive brand on this countdown. One way they're able to keep their price so low is by having an open channel sole. Open channel is when you can actually see the stitching on the bottom of the shoes, where closed channel sole actually cover the stitching. So a shoe with an open channel sole doesn't take as much time to produce compared to a pair of shoes that has a closed channel sole. So that's one way for a brand to cut some of their production costs without cutting corners on other parts like the leather quality, for example, or the construction of the shoes. Number nine on the list is Allen Edmonds. Allen Edmonds retail for $395 to $425. And one thing that's very special about Allen Edmonds, they're the only brand on this list that's actually made in America. Allen Edmonds, just like the Carlos Santos before them, also has an open channel sole. Allen Edmonds is known for their strong construction quality. They also have a nice crafting program. So once your shoes are worn out, you can actually send them back to get them recrafted for a small fee. Their most popular shoes are the Park Avenue, which is your quintessential cap to Oxford. Now, if you've seen my video on the three signs of a quality shoes, I mentioned that three things to look for is the construction quality, the leather quality, and the aesthetics. To me, Allen Edmonds check two out of those three boxes. The construction quality is awesome, and the leather quality is really nice. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the Allen Edmonds aesthetics. Now, before you Allen Edmonds stands come after me with pitchforks in the comments, just know that this is just one man's opinion. I'm not telling you not to wear your Allen Edmonds, and I actually recommend Allen Edmonds to some of my clients. It's just that personally, I do feel like they're a couple steps behind compared to their European counterparts. Number eight, Cobbler Union. Cobbler Union brand themselves as bespoke inspired, and you can see why when you hold one of their shoes. The finishing of the sole is something that you usually find in much more expensive pair of shoes, and their signature quilted heel cups look like the seats in a luxury sports car. Cobbler Union is able to do all this while selling their shoes for just under $400. When the brand first came out, I was one of the first guys to try them back in 2014. I got a pair of the William 2 on the CD last. Now the CD last, the instep is kind of low, so if you're somebody like me that have a high instep, that may not be the best fit for your feet. But make no mistakes about it, Cobbler Union makes some really beautiful shoes. Cobbler Union only has one brick and mortar store, which is in Atlanta, where you can actually walk in and try on the shoes. At 395, they're really hard to beat. Number seven is J. Fitzpatrick Footwear. J. Fitzpatrick Footwear is the brainchild of Justin Fitzpatrick. Now, if you're not familiar with Justin, you should definitely get familiar. I learned a lot that I know about shoes by reading Justin's blog called the Shoe Snob blog. So it was a natural progression for Justin to go from writing about shoes to actually start making his own shoes. J. Fitzpatrick Footwear has some really beautiful shoes. And just like Cobbler Union before it, only retail for $3.95. J. Fitzpatrick Footwear has a showroom in New York City, which is great because just a couple years ago, they only had one in Europe. Now, Justin is American, but the shoes are made out in Spain. Beautiful shoes for under $400. I'm looking forward to getting me a pair. Number six, Love and Tongue. Love and Tongue is a brand out of Sweden, but it's also made out in Spain. Now, if you're starting to see a trend, it's not a coincidence. The last three brands were all made out in Spain. Spain is known for making really quality shoes, and Love and Tongue is no different. A couple videos back, I did the unboxing of my Love and Tongue black suede shoes. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'll put it up here and also include it in the comments. Love and Tongue retail for around $325, which is an excellent price for such a great product. Their main last is the S last, which is a round last, just like the shoes that I unboxed. And they also have the H last, which is their chisel last. If you're not sure of the difference between a round toe and a square toe, I also did a video on that. I don't think that you're gonna find a pair of shoes under $350 that's better than Love & Tongue, so I highly recommend them. Now let's get into the top five. Number five is the Armory. The Armory is a menswear store. There's one in Japan and there's one in New York City. About a year ago, they premiered their own shoe brand. The Armory shoes are made in England and retail for $495. They're the most expensive shoes on a countdown. Now one very interesting thing about the Armory shoes, they were made in collaboration with Yohei Fukuda. If you're not familiar with Yohei Fukuda, he's one of the 
top bespoke shoemakers in the world. One great thing about the Armory shoes is they're all made out of one piece of leather. So you might look at the shoes and think that it's a couple different parts of leather that actually makes the shoes, but that's mostly for decoration. The whole shoe is actually made out of one piece of leather. So what that does is make those shoes more comfortable and also minimizes the creasing. One thing I would like to see from the Armory in the future is for them to have more last. Currently, all their shoes are made on one last, which is a soft square last called the Hajime. But I would definitely like to see a round last in their lineup in the future. Number four on the list is a brand new brand called Sons of Henry. Surprise, surprise, Sons of Henry is made in Spain. The owner of Sons of Henry used to sell shoes for other brands, mostly Vash. I actually bought a pair of Vash from him a couple years ago, and he's very knowledgeable about shoes. Sons of Henry retail for $365. I don't own a pair yet, but it's definitely in the works. But from what I can see, they make really beautiful shoes with beautiful quality leather, including their suede. They have three main lasts. The first is the elegant round last. The second is called the soft chisel last. And they have a third last called the contemporary almond last. And that last is strictly for their split toe derbies. Sons of Henry is going to be a brand to be reckoned with for years to come. And I can't wait to get me my first pair. Number three is TLB Mallorca. And as the name suggests, TLB Mallorca is made out in Spain. The interesting part about this brand is they have two different lines. They have their ready to wear line, which is the entry level line. And then they have their more exclusive line called the Arista line that retails around $400. The biggest difference between their ready to wear and the Arista line is in the finishes, especially in the sole. The sole of the Arista has a bevel waist, which is something that you would find in shoes that cost twice as much. It makes the shoes look really elegant as the sole is cut really, really close to the shoes. The Arista comes in two different lasts. The first is the Picasso last, which is their square last, and the Goya last, which is their round last. Now we're down to the top two. Number two comes from Loke and it's their top range called the 1880 Export Grade. If you're not familiar with Loke, they're made in England and been making shoes for years. They retail for $450 and the leather quality is top notch. Their shoes are beautiful and only come in one last, which is called the Tower Last. Loke is a name that's synonymous with shoes as they've been around since 1880, but you can get any better than the Export Grade. Retailing at $450 for these kind of shoes is really a great deal. Comparing to their regular shoes, the export grade has a much better leather quality and also more attention to detail when it comes to their designs. And like I was saying before, their last called the Tower Last is really an excellent looking last. That leads us to number one. The number one shoes on my top 10 list of shoes between $300 and $500 is Carmina Shoemaker out of Spain. Carmina retails for $450 and have stores all over the world. Carmina has a lot of lasts that can fit all sorts of different food shapes. They also have plenty of different designs. The leather quality is awesome. Their suede is one of the best suede that you can get. I highly recommend Carmina. Actually, one of my very first videos was the unboxing of my Carmina Double Monk in brown suede. You can see it right here. Carmina only has one store in the States, which is located in New York. You can't really go wrong when you're talking about shoes under $500. To me, Carmina is the top. Everything else is under that. But a lot of the shoes that I mentioned before are actually gunning for that crown. So I don't know how much longer Carmina is going to be able to hold on. But for now, to me, Carmina is definitely the best out of that group. So that was my top 10 shoes between $300 and $500. I'll also be making a video of the top shoes between $150 and $275. And another video on the top shoes from $500 to $750. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe or everybody gonna think that you a hater. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.